Lee Bridge Road in Leighton, East London. This is genuinely one of London's great thoroughfares, an old coaching road leading out from the city deep out into Essex. And it really came into its own with the, with the days of the great, the great days of stagecoach travel, which of course would have brought with it many opportunities for highwaymen and footpads. Was a footpad just a highwayman without a horse? I've never really got to the bottom of that. I'm assuming they were. This is the wonderful Leebridge Library, which is uh, one of the Carnegie Libraries, which uh, you, you've seen a video I uploaded a couple of weeks ago, hopefully. There was a collaboration with Kensal Rise Community Library, and that is also a Carnegie Library. This one um, was opened in 1905 and is a uh, grade two listed. It's recently been very extensively renovated. And I've not been in since then, but it, the photos look wonderful. Also, Carnegie was the American philanthropist, very, very wealthy man. So Andrew Carnegie was a Scottish American industrialist. He made, I think he made a lot of his money in the steel industry in the United States and became one of the wealthiest Americans ever in history. And then he did that thing of, in his final years, do, uh, devoting a lot of his time and money to philanthropy after he'd amassed an enormous fortune. And he donated something like $350 million uh, at the time to charitable good deeds. And of course, he's famous, you know, Carnegie Hall in New York, right? But he also had a particular interest in local libraries and he built them or funded them all around Britain. And there are a number of them in London. Kensal Rise Community Library is one. The library on Thornhill Square in Islington is another one. And then this one here in Leighton. It's a real beauty. Also is a beauty. Look at this behind me here. Lovely bit of Art Deco splendor here on the Lee Bridge Road. One of the real features now of Libra Road is this new cycle path, which is great, and I'm all for safe cycling. It's brilliant, but it does mean that I've, I've nearly been hit several times already, because if I step out to get a bit more light, I can get smashed by a bike. This is one of the great buildings of Libra Road, this beautiful old cinema here. I'll put the name up on the screen. And I think this is, uh, was designed by the great theater architect, George Coles, who was born in Leighton or has a strong association with Leighton. It's a real one now, it's, uh, now it's a church, like the fate of many of the old cinemas. Bingo Hall, then church, natural progression, right? And although Leebridge Road is, I think it mostly comes of age in the Georgian period, doesn't it? With the big long distance kind of stagecoach travel. But in the area, there are a number of traces of Roman roads that kind of crisscross through here, which leads them to believe there must have been some sort of Roman presence in the area beyond the villa that was found um, near the old cricket ground around that area. And there may have been a Roman way station here as well, a sort of stopping off point on the Roman roads between London and Colchester and Lincoln and further north. And maybe you can see on the, on the footage here that we're starting to climb uphill here. You, you're making the climb up the hill towards Epping Forest. Epping Forest sits at the end of Lee Bridge Road. So you can really see it would have been the moment when you'd have been leaving the built environment and heading into the dangerous roads through the forest. Love the way these little row of shops here. It was originally built as Bon Marche Parade, 1904. Bon Marche Parade, 1904. Isn't that delightful? And some lovely buildings. And here's a little um, vignette of what's happening in the area. I guess you've got the BB Caf there. Good old score calf. Next to it, you've got Dennis Chippy, which is classic. Then you've got Pinch La Deli, and apparently that's really nice. I, I like all these shops along here. I've eaten in every one of these little caps and chippies along here. Not been in any of the fancy delis yet, so maybe today's the day. Down here we have the Dagenham Brook. 
one of the rivers of the area. Well, technically, mm, you know, it's a continuation of the Heim Hill Brook. Some people would say it was a, a sewer, like a, a ditch, a drainage ditch that was used as a sewer, hence the name. But I'll link below to my video of my walk along the Dagenham Brook, or my most recent one anyway. Here is the really sad sight of the old abandoned football ground of Leighton Football Club. I've been in here a few times and documented it. They're going to build on it, I think. But look, you can see the old stands are still here. It's really sad, isn't it? It's a place of, you know, the club going out of business. And a number of people have inquired via my blog to try and, you know, get it back to as a football pitch. And they've, they've got funds to do so, but for some reason it never seems to go very far. And Leighton Football Club are one of the great non-league clubs of East London if not one of the great non-league clubs in Britain at one point in, when they were in the Ishmian League, along with Wickham Wanderers, the mighty Wickham Wanderers, who now play in League One and very nearly got into the championship. Leighton were kind of at that level. And now this is what has become of their ground. Look at the state of the old dugouts. You can imagine the coaches and the subs in there shouting at the players on the pitch. You can see now most of the pitch is a, uh, is a car park. It's interesting, one of those cars drove right up behind me and you can see how empty it is there. So clearly they were trying to tell me to get lost. It's very sad and poignant. I mean, I know there's lots of reasons why the club went out of business. It merged with various clubs over the years, but the original Leighton FC is one of the oldest clubs in London. And I think, I might be wrong actually, I think it might be one of the oldest clubs in the country, the original Leighton FC. I think it dates back to the 1860s. So it was one, I think it might even be one of the founder members of the Football Association. I'll, I'll verify that and correct it on the screen. if that's wrong, but, you know, it's still sad to see, you know, particularly as there are people in there who would like to keep this going as a place of sport, as a place of football. And of course, even the very least, there are so many amazing memories that people have connected with this pitch here when they were one of the titans of non-league football, Leighton FC. Next to the football grounds, we have one of the old coaching inns, the Hare and Hounds. And of course, the football pitch was known as the Hare and Hounds ground. It did change its name for a little while, actually, but it's good to see that it's changed it back to the Hare and Hounds. Good decision. That was a good pub. I don't know what it's like now it's been changed hands, but it was a really good pub before. Landlord and landlady have been there forever and a day. I realised that I never actually, I never actually introduced this video or set it up in any way, which in a way is just as well. I mean, really, it's just my my Sunday evening walk, and uh, sometimes I just like to take you on the walk that I happen to be doing. And actually, I'd be lying if I said I didn't design this to bring you along here. Um, but uh, I've had a desire to come down this way for a little while to have a proper look at it again because it's changing quite a lot. So my original plan actually was to go down Leebridge Road through the industrial estate over the marshes then up Walthamstow Market. I've dawdled and spent a long time in, uh, in Leighton FC so I don't think we do all of that route. We've got about an hour of light. So what we'll do, we'll definitely go down Leebridge Road to Leebridge Station. Maybe we'll then just carry on along Leebridge Road or maybe we will still cut across the marshes. It's up for grabs basically but I hope you've enjoyed it so far. It's been a real treat for me. I love logging all of this and, and sharing it with you and taking, you know, keep looking at it with fresh eyes. Here are the really interesting uh, Warner, I was going to say Warner houses. They're Warner dwellings, aren't they? Because a lot of them are flats. And you can see, look, the double front door over there. I'll link below actually to that Dagenham Brook video again where Lucy Harrison, who, the local artist who did a great project about those houses, talks more about them. But basically they were an early effort at providing low-cost, good quality housing for workers in the area. There's a few of them around uh, Leighton and Walthamstow. They're really interesting. So up ahead you can see one of the new features of the area, these three towers here that have risen along Leebridge Road. 
near the station. We'll go and have a, a proper look. Look at this really majestic electricity substation here. It's Borough of Leighton. Borough of Leighton Electricity Department. It's like a temple, isn't it? A mausoleum. So here's the massive new development down at the end of Leebridge Road, right near Leebridge Station. I think it's called Motion. I haven't actually seen this bit of it since it's been finished. I think quite a few local people weren't mad happy about it being built. But it's here now. Uh, here we have the the new Leebridge station. Do you think it opened? I think it was 2016, 2017. This uh, this line, this station reopened, I should say. And this is the train that goes up the Lee Valley up to Hartford and Ware. It's great to have it open here now. I do still go through to Stratford, but even so, I love coming through Leebridge. I came down and filmed the reopening of the station. So 2016, 2017. It was a really big celebration. There was bands playing and all sorts. Local politicians came and dignitaries from far and wide. And obviously there were loads of train enthusiasts, of course. Well, Lee Bridge Station closed in 1985. Campaigners and the council, they kept the dream alive. Now the train is running down the track. I love this view here of the road up ahead. It's very green, doesn't it, as we drop down off the bridge, down into the marshes. But actually, it looks anything other than flat and marshy. It looks verdant and wooded, doesn't it, like the other end of the road up at Epping Forest. Now, it's interesting here you have this path that comes from the waterworks just on the other side of the road there and carries on towards the Walthamstow wetlands, which obviously the, the reservoirs. And I think this is built over the aqueduct, which linked the water treatment works and the, um, and the reservoirs up in Walthamstow before they built the new water treatment works there. So they didn't have to move the water down to this site here. The uh, water treatment works just over there is, uh, is an incredible site. I've, I'll link below to videos I've made, they've made more than one. Um, the remnants of the old Victorian water treatment works really are almost like temple-like in, in a lot of ways. I know I've used that before, like with the electricity substation, but I think that's kind of the way they approached sort of um, civic utilities in that kind of Victorian Edwardian era. They were bringing great things to the people and they were really proud of their achievements, like that substation back there. It's again, there's sort of various plans for development around here, around this the end of the Hackney end of Leebridge Road, including the, wow, the uh, ice centre over here. Look, I'll show you. This was the, the ice rink here. I think it still is going to be an ice rink, but they're, they're expanding it and adding more stuff to it there. It's going to be quite an impressive thing when it's finished. Here we have the boundary between Waltham Forest and Hackney coming up with the River Lee and there's a sign here, this new sign, Waltham Forest E10 here on the road. Just to let you know as you leave the borough. And here we have the sacred River Lee. It's the perfect place to end this walk along Lee Bridge Road. It's good to just kind of go with the flow sometimes and, you know, see what the, what the river gods are telling us. Although, would the river gods have reached that far up Leebridge Road? I'm not sure. But anyway, I think this is where our walk today must end. Well, thank you so much for joining me on that hyper-local stroll along the historic Leebridge Road. I really, really get a lot from these kind of walks. If I don't do these very kind of particular local ones every couple of months, I feel a real absence in my soul. So I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. The only question for me now 
is where to go for a pint. Do I go across the road there to the Princess of Wales, which means I'm down here, get stuck, how am I going to get home? Or do I go along the canal and then go for a pint somewhere back in Leighton or Leightonstone? Oh, terrible dilemmas. Anyway, look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. And this wasn't even on the list. I've got a list of about 100 walks. This isn't one of them, so could be anywhere. Thank you.